Good evening, Adrian. Good evening, everybody. January is a terrible time for returns. New figures out yesterday suggest one in four Christmas presents get taken back. A gift that doesn't quite fit your style, one that doesn't quite go with your collection, or one that you thought would be perfect but gave you far too much trouble early on. In most cases, you've got 14 days to get your money back. But it doesn't work like that with a £100 million striker. There's no way you're getting a full refund. So I'm afraid you just have to work out how to use it best. That is why Thomas Tuchel and Romelu Lukaku are determined to clean up the mess ahead of this Carabao Cup semi-final. January can also be a pain if you have to go back somewhere you don't really want to. School, college, work. Well, for Antonio Conte, he doesn't want to come back here to the bridge. And the hierarchy don't want him here either. The success he had at the bridge unfolded in an explosion. The fallout was incendiary. The director's box is on the opposite side of the dugouts, which is a good job because no one wants to be reminded of that breakup. Chelsea in blue shirts, blue shorts, white socks, attacking the shed end in the first half where the 4,000 Tottenham fans have come across town. It's white shirts, navy blue shorts and socks for Tottenham Hotspur who will attack the goal away to our right in the first 45 minutes. And before we start, all 22 players and officials take the knee as they ask for racial equality and social justice. Our referee today is Craig Porson. He blows the whistle and the subplot of returning once leading men lingers. But you have to also understand that there is a prize to be had here tonight. A place at Wembley and that should be the focus for Chelsea and Tottenham. All four semi-final matches when they take place are live on Talk Sport. And here's Lukaku bundling into the penalty area. Down the right side, nice and early. Gets the wrong side of the defender. Square it's behind Havertz and it's cleared away. I promise you, we've already seen in the first few minutes the intensity with which this game is going to be played at. If you do get the TalkSport app, download it. You can choose between all of the games that we've got for you over this weekend and you won't want a receipt to take it back. Dean Ashton is with me. Nobody ever wanted to take you back. Who's going to be the star of tonight's show? Well, Lukaku should have been early on. What an opportunity that was. Too quick for Sanchez got himself in behind got himself the other side of Sanchez and I'm just thinking just open that left foot up and curl this past Lloris and he goes and side foots it towards Havertz in the six yard box surprised me that from Lukaku what an opportunity early on Chelsea have the ball just inside opposition territory down the right it's on from Lukaku into Ziyech who is knocked to the floor and it's a free kick given just 10 yards outside the penalty area. I'll run through the two teams for you in just a second when we are certain of the way that Chelsea are playing. We'll get to that in just a second. But they have a free kick over on the far touch line that's about 10, 15 yards in from the right side and about a good 10 yards back from the edge of the penalty area as well. Wide on the right. Saul moves towards the edge of the D. Lukaku is at the near post end of the penalty area. Rudiger and Afpilicueta jostling position round the back. Havertz makes a move now as Mount's delivery goes towards the far post. It's over the head of everybody and it drifts out of play on this near side. So the Chelsea personnel, Rida Balaga in goal. It's Afpilicueta, Saul and Rudiger as what we think is a back three with Ziyech as the right wing back and Alonso as the left wing back, Jorginho and Saul in the centre. Mount and Havertz behind Lukaku and Tottenham with Loris in goal a back three of Tanganga, Sanchez and Davies and then Emerson, Royale and Doherty as the wing backs with Hoybier and Skip in the centre Lucas Moura and Son supporting Kane in the centre circle the ball runs past Saul goes through to Afpilicueta and then Saul tries to curl it back out to the near touchline collected midway inside the Tottenham half by Mason Mount who motors down the left side and releases the ball into the path of Marcus Alonso who comes back infield and finds Mason Mount again and goes all the way back to the halfway line where Rudiger is waiting for him two and a half minutes played you're listening to Talk Sport live in the Carabao Cup semi-final on to Havertz a flick round the corner into Lukaku holds it up holds it on to Saul Maguire edge of the D comes back to Mount who shoots low blocked by Tanganga and then repelled by Skip into the air Chelsea have had all of the ball in the opening few minutes of the match but they've given possession to Tottenham via a foul from a pinnacle wager on the back of Son deep inside Tottenham territory here's Dean Ashton time and time again I watch Mason Mount and I think 
so often he starts the game at such a fantastic tempo it doesn't take him five or ten minutes to warm into a game Mason Mount he's just there straight away full pelt Oliver Skip brilliantly so far attached himself to Mason Mount just stopping him being able to turn on that half turn and look to play in one of the forwards it's going to be so important that Skip and Kuyberg are just screening Havertz and Lukaku it's interesting that Ziyech position isn't it over on the right side when they don't have the ball he very much flexes into a right back position a right wing back position and then as soon as Chelsea have possession he's up alongside Lukaku just behind him here is Ari de Balaga under pressure from Kane inside his own penalty area goes back to Rudiger to the right of him on the edge of the area is Saul up towards Ziyech who taps it infield Saul takes it on and then tries to charge forward he's out muscled by Oibier and Tottenham win the ball back that was rather easy for Hoybier, who's getting ragdolled now by Romelu Lukaku, trying to take the ball off him, can't do so. Goes back to De Vincent Sanchez, and then it's given away cheaply to Alonso by uh, Tanganga. Round the back to Havertz, inside the area, tucks it low, hits the defender, goes in, and Chelsea have an early lead. It's taken less than five minutes for Kai Havertz to put Chelsea in front. It may go down as an own goal, but the shot was on target anyway. It cannoned off the defender, Sanchez, and into the net. After Havertz had been sent through down the left-hand side, he motored towards the edge of the six-yard box, and he couldn't help but fire at home. It all came about from sloppy Tottenham failing to clear, and Chelsea are in front in the semi-final by a goal to nil. But he's injured. I don't know what has happened. He's holding his hand, his wrist. I'm not too sure whether that was during the celebrations or when he went over the top, actually, as he scored the goal. He went over the top of Lloris and clashed, I think it was, with Davis, who was in the goal mouth, or Sanchez. I'm not too sure, and he might have hurt his wrist. But what a, a bright move from Chelsea. Alonso, nice and alive to the situation. Tanganga, sloppy pass out towards Royale. Alonso just nipped in and then played a really clever pass just behind Tanganga. Beautifully weighted for Havertz, who just took a nice little touch, fired it across. And what I like about this is he's fired it across towards the far post, not trying to be too clever. It means that if there's a touch, which there was from Sanchez, it's bound to go in, up into the roof of the net. Great start from Chelsea. I mean, it was a really, really sloppy pass out from the back by Tanganga, nabbed in by Alonso who fed Havertz down that left hand side and from the moment that Havertz then picks up the ball he's in a position where you know, I mean there's a 90% chance of scoring isn't there, I mean because he's literally six yards out. Well he's done really well because he's just shrugged off Tanganga who's trying to get back at him and then he just fires it across like you said defenders, Sanchez can't do anything as it strikes him on the shin and goes up into the roof of the net but Royale as well, I think he's culpable. He knows that Tanganga needs a bit of support there. He doesn't really come towards the ball and say, here, lend it to me. He just ambles across and Alonso is quick to nip in. Well, he hasn't scored for six games, Kai Havertz, so he'll be having that one, that's for sure, and it'll go down as his goal. Chelsea won, Tottenham Hotspur, Neil, what a fast start to the game, and it's a goal that Chelsea really want, went on the hunt for from the minute the game kicked off here at Stamford Bridge. They lead Tottenham Hotspur by a goal to nil. Kai Havertz with it. The ball loose on halfway. Tanganga's giving it away again, and Romelu Lukaku has got it. It's poked forward by Sayal, one burn by Mount. Mount wins it back again, snapping into a tackle as it Tanganga tries to break clear. Kane gets tangled up with Jorginho, and the ball breaks to Alonso immediately. Looks to release Lukaku down the left hand side. It's over. To Vincent Sanchez's head takes a little bobble and a bounce through to the goalkeeper, Lloris, who is the captain. And Tottenham have the ball again. Again, it's a competitive semi-final lineup. The only thing we can guarantee you is that for the first time in seven years, a team from Manchester will not win the Carabao Cup. But will it be Conte? Will it be Tuchel, Klopp or Arteta? And the odds are that it will be a London club as they make up three of the four semi-finals. And Chelsea have made the perfect start, Dean Ashton. Well, and also they've matched this atmosphere, haven't they? Brilliant atmosphere at the start of the game, and the players have matched that as Kane just turns tries to fire it forward, he's dispossessed by Saul, Jorginho is there as well Kane comes away with the ball, and Philip Oeta robs it, sends it out wide, now Ziyech tries to canter up towards the halfway line faces up alongside Davis and then tries to come in field past Doherty Doherty had a bit of a problem actually when he played in that position as the left wing back earlier in the season, it was back in uh, the game against Southampton where he got the ball a lot over on the left hand side but struggled to use his left foot 
which was a bit of a problem for Tottenham Hotspur. He's on the run again. He's been played in by Hoybier. Has it now on the far side. Offside flag is up. And again, he always going to look as if he's going to try and come in on the right. This is a right-footed player playing on the left. And this time Ziyech is fortunate that the offside flag went up on this near side. It's a free kick on the edge of the penalty area. You're listening to Talk Sport. And it is Chelsea 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0. We play nine minutes here in the Carabao Cup semi-final. And Chelsea, who... Uh, came into the game with problems surrounding Romelu Lukaku and worries over squad depth really when you look at the fact that they've had so many players injured and picked up COVID-19 recently they've had to play players you wouldn't expect to see in a semi-final Malong Saar who's playing at the heart of the defence today Ziyech playing as a out of position right wing back tonight have made a very good start and Thomas Tuchel will be pleased with that he will have a spack on the pitch I think I wonder whether he dislocated a finger because he's just got a white bit of tape wrapped around two or three fingers here is Tanganga on the right side ball up towards Lucas Moura hasn't really got into the game yet spins away from Alonso and then motors into the middle part of the Chelsea half his ball is inaccurate and it's intercepted by Akpili Kuwait and then guided all the way back to the goalkeeper Rida Balaga by Saul Neguez and Chelsea have the possession once again it's Chelsea 1 Tottenham 0 and uh, we're live from Stamford Bridge tonight in West London and wherever you're listening to us whether it be on the TalkSport app or around the world we know we've got listeners tonight in the United States of America listening to us live on Sirius XMFC thank you very much for lending us your ears and joining us here in the capital for a capital clash between two London giants. Here's Alonso up towards the halfway line. Mount being pursued by Skip. Tries to get it back towards uh, Saar. Saar's forward ball is helped forward by Havertz who seems to be okay after that wrist injury that he sustained during the collision after the goal. Ziyech takes the ball forward over the halfway line after turning on the cusp of the centre circle and then it's back to Rudiger. Uh, it's on to Mason Mount now. Really fast start to the game. It's a really fast-paced game here on Sunday when Chelsea played Liverpool in a thrilling 2-2 draw. They went 2-0 behind in that game. Here is Alonso. Tottenham can't get a kick at the moment, Dean. No, I think what's really interesting is Ziyech, when, he's, when Chelsea do have the ball, he's drifting into midfield. Same with Mount, which is making a, a 4v3, even a 4v2 at times. And they've just got total control in the middle of the pitch, Chelsea. And the tempo is just excellent. Havertz and Lukaku as well. Impressive in terms of looking to stretch Tottenham, running in behind. It's all too easy sometimes to come to the ball. The pace is brilliant. Step over by uh, Ziyech. Allows Apilicueta to produce across towards the far post. Headed away by Royale. But across the face of his own goal. It's going to come back to Havertz again. Who shoots down low to his right. And it's smuggled away by the goalkeeper who reacted well. But wasn't particularly elegant defending by Tottenham. And the clearance from Emerson Royale. The header was poor it went straight across the face of his own goal and landed his team in hot water once again maybe it will help Chelsea maybe it has helped Chelsea tonight that they can unite behind Tuchel and Lukaku and direct their frustrations at one common em enemy certainly a great atmosphere inside this stadium and enhanced actually by the newly installed rail seating and the 4,000 Tottenham fans that have taken up their allocation away to our left hand side Here's Davis for Tottenham, into Skip, back to Hoybier, now on to Lucas Moura, out to the right, down by the corner flag in the Chelsea half is Emerson Royale, on the attack for Spurs for the first time really in the game. Held up by Alonso, back to Lucas Moura, down the side of the penalty box where it's collected by the South Korean Son, a little bit too short for Emerson Royale, asked a lot of him and that allowed then Malon Saar to come across and nab the ball and then a free kick given against Son for a foul on Jorginho on the edge of the penalty area but Chelsea look hungrier they look sharper they look feistier than Tottenham in the opening 15 minutes or so well in every single 50-50 battle that they win it just lifts this crowd it gives the players a boost you're right they've just been that little bit sharper a little bit more switched on than Tottenham so far who have looked laboured I think in possession in an attacking sense anyway 
Chelsea five times winners of this competition, but none since 2015 when they beat Spurs. But Tottenham knocked them out on penalties last season. Here is uh, Alonso cantering down the left, plays it on to Havertz. Havertz moves towards the edge of the penalty area, space on the far side of the right. Chelsea give it to Saul instead, who shoots when he should have passed it out wide. It's blocked by Hoybier back into midfield. Afpilicueta joins the attack now, down the right for Chelsea, attacking the shed end. An exchange of passes on the right comes back to Afpilicueta. The Spaniard looks up. Sees Lukaku make a move for him. It's two Tottenham players to try and thread the ball between. He can't do so. So he goes back to the halfway line and Chelsea recycle the ball once again. Rudiger out wide to Mount. Buzzing around in that sort of left channel. Dropping deep, picking the ball up. Difficult to mark and Skip can't find him. And Tanganga doesn't know whether to follow him either because he's got Havertz to deal with as well. Here is How uh, Here is. Uh, Mount again, taking the ball out of the sky and away from Skip into Alonso, then Havertz with his back to goal, 10 yards from the edge of the penalty area on the Chelsea left, back to Havertz they're playing triangles round Tottenham at the moment the cross into the box is a little bit too high for Lukaku, who sends his hand up in appreciation of the delivery from the left hand side by Kai Havertz. Well they're trying their best Tottenham to just keep the shape with the interchanging of positions of Mount, Havertz Alonso Ziyech they're just finding it hard to attach themselves to Chelsea players so probably the best thing is is what they're doing which is to keep that shape and try not to be pulled out of position but Mason Mount's positioning is just so good a little triangle of defenders but he's just getting himself in between Tanganga, Skip and Royale just that little space hard to pick up Ziyech right side trying to take on Doherty plays it centrally oh loads of space for Mount edge of the area left footed shot takes a deflection off Tanganga goes out in the way for a corner the first of the game for Chelsea who have been on fire from the minute we have started here on Talk Sport Chelsea's focus has to be geared towards putting what happened behind them and moving on they've got many important fixtures coming up they're competing for five trophies this season Spurs have been better defensively under Antonio Conte they've kept five clean sheets in their opening 17 games of the season they've kept five and 11 under their new manager but have already conceded a goal here in the first 15 minutes at Stamford Bridge not ideal here's Ziyech with a delivery from the corner in towards the near post it's away but only as far as Mount who hits it back towards goal hits the back of Skip bounces into Jorginho's path and just in front of the centre circle Chelsea recycles it. Tottenham who are in transition under Antonio Conte but are unbeaten domestically look second best here in the opening 15 minutes of this game Jorginho just right of the centre circle back to Afpilicueta and all the way back to the goalkeeper and Chelsea just quite content to hold on to possession something they've dominated since the very start well the issue Antonio Conte has got is the interchanging of positions and the freedom that Chelsea are playing with in, in, within that system at, at times they're changing to what looks like a back four and then all of a sudden it looks like a, a back five it's just really really difficult at the moment for Tottenham to pick up Chelsea players 61% possession so far for Chelsea 39 for Tottenham four shots on goal to zero two shots on target of those to zero in Chelsea's favour it's been domination since the beginning and Thomas Tuchel pleased man now Chelsea building from defence both Rudiger and Apelikoueta given the thumbs up in the last couple of minutes by the German manager here is Jorginho centre field for Chelsea in blue with that thick yellow stripe down the side of their kit out to the left and Mason Mount who's just slowed to a walking pace asking for Havertz just to spin in behind possibly and give him an option Mount again just lurking on this near side with nobody around him they're not entirely sure who's supposed to be picking him up as he charges down the left towards the edge of the Tottenham box lends it to Havertz comes back out to the near side and Alonso once again Saul into Havertz round the corner for Mount back to Havertz who's got it back on the edge of the D sends it right to Ziyech on his left foot he'll shoot to the far corner it's only a yard over the top and Lloris who was initially certain it was going wide then had a little bit of a panic started to quick step towards the right just sees it fly past the post and into the Tottenham fans and out for a goal kick away to our left it remains Chelsea 1 Tottenham Hotspur 0 honestly Oliver Skip and Joyberg feel like they're in a house of mirrors at the moment it just feels like there's just players and blue shirts everywhere they turn that was just fantastic play between Havertz and Mount lovely one-touch play flicking around the corner to each other and then into Ziyech who then just looks to bend it as he cuts in off that right hand side looks to bend it in that far corner and he's probably a foot 
over the top. No, it's been a tricky time for all coaches. Antonio Conte certainly saying it wasn't simple for him. He didn't really know who was going to be available, how he was going to juggle his lineup or his resources coming into the game. And it's the same with all coaches, isn't it? You don't know from one day to the next now who's going to be available and who's not going to be available. And that does appear to be the new reality. But Tottenham have been dizzied by Chelsea's start in this game. And Chelsea lead by a goal to nil. And even when they win the ball back in the centre of the field or, or high up, Chelsea very quickly snap back in and win it back again. Because in the middle of the pitch, they've just got so many players. Jorginho, Saul, Havertz, dropping Mount, Ziyech all coming into the middle area of the pitch especially when they lose the ball they're winning it back so quickly and at the moment Tottenham there's no out ball there's no runs in behind Kane's not going to really do that maybe Son or Lucas Moura maybe need to take it upon themselves to at least try and stretch this Chelsea defence 1-0 to Chelsea live on TalkSport and uh a rather underemployed Kepa Arida Balaga has the ball away to our right-hand side. He's deputising for Eduard Mendy. His last appearance was the League Cup quarter-final against Brentford. He rolls it out towards Rudiger, who's playing in the middle of the three central defenders today, to Jorginho, then up to Mason Mount. Again, in that sort of half position between midfield and attack and picking the ball up in beautiful spaces. Ball clipped forward by Rudiger. It's over the head of Havertz this time. He thought that Alonso was going round the back to pick up that ball, but it goes over the head of Emerson Royale, and it's out for a throw-in on this near side for Tottenham. Well, I feel like Lucas Moura has to drop. He has to drop and help the uh, the two midfield players that Tottenham have got in there because Mason Mount just constantly keeps picking up the ball with no pressure whatsoever. Just on this left-hand side, it's far, far too easy. He's in the space again as the ball's clipped forward by Saul, flicked on by Alonso, drops on the edge of the box after being repelled by Tanganga. Skip brings it down, he's immediately engaged by Saul. The ball flicks forward and then comes back to Skip, who's accused of hand ball, but he didn't. He chested it and then helped it out to the far side. And now Matt Doherty, formerly of Wolverhampton Wanderers, goes on a charge for Tottenham, down into the left wing position, then cuts it back, sends it to Hoybio, who switches the play to the right. He's taken out of the sky by Emerson Royale in his long sleeve white shirt, tries to slip it down the channel for Harry Kane, who can't escape the shackles of Antonio Rudiger, who uses his strength to sort of edge the England captain away from the ball, and it goes through to Kepa Arrida Malaga in the goal away to our right. You're listening to TalkSport, 20 minutes played, and it's Chelsea 1, Tottenham nil in the first leg of the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. Tomorrow night we were supposed to be bringing you the game between Arsenal and Liverpool. That's been postponed because of COVID-19. As a result of that, that's going to be rescheduled for the following week, um, where we will bring you the second leg, which is now the first leg. And then we roll on to another week on, where we will bring you the second leg, which was supposed to be the first leg. You get what I mean. <laughs> I'll switch the advantage in terms of uh, who has the uh, first leg at home. Chelsea have taken advantage of having the first leg at home by making a really fast start to this one. Here's Jorginho on the edge of the centre circle. Out to Alonso. Alonso back to the halfway line. Friday night, by the way, we've got Swindon against Manchester City for you live on TalkSport. The first of nine live commentary games expected to bring you uh, in the FA Cup this weekend. Mount protecting the ball. Chelsea winning it through Jorginho. A push by skip. Craig Borson says play on after having just a little word in the former uh, Norwich Loney's ear. Jorginho looks up, sees the run of Lukaku, goes right to the far side anyway and tries to bring Chelsea down the right flank. Again, the ball's won deep inside the Tottenham half. Sol saying he did not handle it. Craig Paulson saying he did. Inadvertently free kick. Oh, a bit spicy between Ben Davis and Ziyech over on the far side. Ziyech, probably in any other year, would not be in this game because he should be at the AFCON. But he fell out with a coach as a result of that. He didn't go to uh, the AFCON with Morocco. So no, it'll, be, it'll be a big miss. He certainly will. Morocco Obviously lost playing. Chelsea's game. And he's, he's an interesting part of this Chelsea team tonight in terms of the role that he's playing. I mean, he's just... At times he looks like he's playing as a right wing back and then all of a sudden he looks like he's playing just off Lukaku up the top and then Aspilicueta's covering. But that's where... Tottenham have got to be a little bit clever 
and see when that happens can they take advantage Doherty got down the left just a, a few moments ago that's an area maybe they can look at can Son maybe spin into that area Tottenham haven't won a trophy since the League Cup victory of 2008 under Juan de Ramos against Chelsea Conte reiterating on Monday that trophies are important for building the club into a su sustainable successful challenger was important too and you know that this game means a lot for Tottenham fans because they don't win here very often. Here's Doherty playing in by Kane, up to the edge of the area. What a tackle by Ziyech, getting back the wrong side and managing to poke it away. Moves out to the right-hand side, everything going Chelsea's way at the moment. Even when they're broken upon, they're reacting well. 23 gone, 1-0 they lead. A slip by Jorginho. Now Lucas Moura is able to turn, but Jorginho has recovered his footing. And then Alonso has jumped into a tackle. It was a little bit late there on Emerson Royan. A free kick has been given to Tottenham Hotspur midway inside the Chelsea half on the right-hand side. Well, I mean, it was a good tackle in the end, but that was the, the opening. Kane spotted Doherty making that run on the blind side of Ziyech, who had just switched off for a second if his touch should have been a bit better and I think he should have had a shot rather than looking to, to play somebody in and then Ziyech just getting back in time but that is something that Tottenham can look at atmosphere terrific at Stamford Bridge Chelsea lead by a goal to nil on the right is Emerson Royale gets a tap from Son then returns here who goes down the right towards the byline produces a cross which is blocked by Saul looks like a different player tonight by the way Saul Niguez looks fitter and sharper doesn't he in the yeah, midfield he does, he does. And pretty faultless so far alongside Jorginho. But Chelsea have had a habit of throwing away points at home so far this season, throwing away leads, and they won't want to do that tonight in this Carabao Cup semi-final. They lead by a goal to nil. Son to take the first corner that Tottenham have managed so far in the game. He's taking his time over it. Craig Porson is encouraging him to get on with the game. Right-footed, he arcs it towards the near post. It's a little flick by Lucas Moura. It wasn't the best of corners, but it wasn't dealt with initially well by Chelsea. So they break very quickly now through the middle of the pitch with Havertz. He sent uh, Lukaku a bit wide. Lukaku fancies his chances of running down the right-hand side, but he's overrun the ball and slipped and then careered into the Hyundai advertising board, which is just flicked over on the far side, and it's gone out for a throw-in to Tottenham Hotspur. Wasn't a great ball from Kai Havertz out towards Lukaku and that certainly pleased the Tottenham fans behind that goal when he, <laughs> when he slipped on the ball. Love a bit of rivalry. Certainly rivalry between these two. Chelsea's supporters making that clear before the start of the game. And now, funnily enough, <laughs> <laughs> on cue. Stand up if you hate Tottenham is the chorus around Stamford Bridge and everybody's on their feet. It's a neighbourly thing. Ball is on the right side without pulling away to chipping it down the right. And Tottenham Hotspur allowing that to go all the way back to Hugo Lloris. They did get to the final of this competition last season, remember, when they were narrowly beaten at Wembley just six days after sacking Jose Mourinho. Ball drops over the shoulder of Rudiger being pursued by Kane. And he helps it all the way back to his goalkeeper, Arida Balaga. Well, I mean, so far, Rudiger has got the measurement of Harry Kane. I wonder whether Saar would play through the middle and Rudiger would favour this left-hand side as he has done most of the season. But no, he's gone into the centre of that back three and controlled Kane so far. It's been a different class, hasn't he, Rudiger, over the last year since being brought back into the team. I mean, it's... It's vital that Chelsea regain his signature. I can see why so many clubs are after him. Yeah, well, they've signed Thiago Silva for another year. He's not available tonight. One bit of good news this week for Chelsea amid the maelstrom of the Lukaku storm. Here is Alonso on the left-hand side for Chelsea, moving up towards the angle of the Tottenham penalty area. He goes wide to the left and Havertz, the goal scorer, back into Alonso once again. It remains Chelsea 1, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Here's Jorginho poking it wide towards the left and his long sleeve blue shirt is Alonso. Cuts in past Emerson, runs up towards Lucas Moura. He charges into him. The ball ricochets into the path of Alon um, Emerson Royale, who prods it out on this near side towards the thin and wiry German manager of Chelsea in his dark slacks and his, oh, his tracksuit bottoms with the yellow slash and the pale grey coat which he has tightly wrapped around his body and his 
familiar beanie that you see so often with Thomas Tuchel. He's standing on the touchline, Antonio Conte, one of his predecessors to his right. Here's Jorginho, deep into the penalty area. Oh, the goalkeeper came and fumbled. It's poked back in by Sol Neguez. It wasn't the greatest of prod back, but it wasn't the greatest of goalkeeping either. He came out rather uncertainly there, Hugo Lloris, whose contract itself runs out at the end of the season, Hugo Lloris. It wasn't particularly convincing, that. Well, I think he thought that Lukaku was going to jump with him and therefore maybe misjudged the flight of the ball slightly but Saul could he have just got his head up there and maybe half volley lifted it over the top of Lloris maybe but he looked to control and it was a lovely shin <laughs> is that a technical term? <laughs> or trampoline one or the other <laughs> This is uh, Havertz on the near side. He's now scored five goals in three League Cup appearances for Chelsea. Just one goal fewer than he's scored in 42 Premier League games for the Blues. He likes the League Cup. He did score a hat-trick though against Barnsley, so it sort of inflates that statistic, I think. <laughs> 1-0 Chelsea lead. They have it on the halfway line. It's picked up by Saul. And then out to the right, collected by Billy Kuwaita. 29 on the clock. The big jumbotron away to our left-hand side. And... Uh, it's a cross to Alonso, finds Molong Sarr. The Spurs have had a bit of a problem away from home recently. They did win away on Saturday at Vicarage Road, narrowly, when it was against Watford. And they've won just one of the last four away games, and only four of their 14 away games all season. Conte will have to change that. Here's Havertz into the penalty area again. Coming forward is Jorginho. Out to the left and Ziyech now with a cross deep towards the far post. They're queuing up and Saul tries to get there ahead of Doherty. Can't do so. And the Irishman glances it out on the far side and away for a throw-in. Brilliant from Ziyech coming all the way over from that right-hand side to get involved, to outnumber Tottenham on this left-hand side. Delicious ball to the back post and Doherty did brilliant just to make sure that he got between Saul and Aspilicueta to flick it away throwing over on the far side then Chelsea on the attack still as they have been for most of this first half good header by Ziyech back out to Aspilicueta then on to Saul collected by uh, Rudiger who's attempting to cross and De Vincent Sanchez prods it clear it goes towards the halfway line it's headed forward by Alonso and then Molong Saar will just see this all the way back to his goalkeeper or will he? No, he'll stop it and play it out towards the right instead and Rudiger will keep things moving for Chelsea who lead by that goal after five minutes scored by Kai Havertz to give them the lead in the Carabao Cup semi-final under the lights here at Stamford Bridge in South West London tonight I mean Tottenham are uh definitely five yards off every single Chelsea player it's too easy for Tottenham just to be allowed to play sorry Chelsea to be allowed to play into their attacking players Chelsea will want a second goal as they attempt to capitalize on their superiority in this game Habert still not entirely comfortable with that wrist injury is he at all he's just collided with Tanganga and Tanganga has considered a corner well, I think it's finger I think it's yeah, yeah possible dislocation because it, it looked like as he tried to palm Emerson Royale off there it was his hand that he was obviously trying to use and ever done that yourself dislocated your finger I haven't thankfully seems a bit squeamish for me <laughs> yeah. he has to take it in the corner in front of the Tottenham fans left footed arcs it towards the penalty spot oh Rudiger's coming around the back he gets there takes a deflection into the side netting now I think there's an argument here uh, that uh, well Rudiger certainly felt for a second he would appeal for anything anyway that it might have come off a hand I don't think the referee is even considering that we do have VAR in the Carabao Cup semi-final and Jared Gillett will review everything back at base it appears as if a corner will suffice and Mason Mount just trots over towards the west stand the junction of the shed and the west stand and takes the applause of the Chelsea supporters They're very much happy to see him stride over to take this corner right footed it's an uh, outswinger once again flicked away by Kane comes out to the edge of the area recycled by Alonso tosses it straight back in they're queuing up back post again headed away once more this time by Davis now Ziyech takes it in from the touchline about three inches and then it's crossed back in through the middle of the six yard box by Mount and it was just a little bit too close to Hugo Lloris who came out diving at the feet of Lukaku to claim and Tottenham can bring it away down this right hand oh, side so frustrating it was a fantastic ball from Mason Mount just whipped that in behind all of the Tottenham defence cardinal sin though is there isn't one forward looking to get across the goalkeeper making that darting run towards the near post 
Doherty for Tottenham coming forward plays it right footed down the left and loses out because it's pinched by Ziyech and he quickly releases Lukaku two on two for a moment for Chelsea but the white shirts are getting back now Lukaku looking to take on to Vincent Sanchez beats him and then gets a ball repelled off of Hoybier chases the second ball and gets brought down by the Vincent Sanchez and wins a free kick over on the far side well that was a, a little bit more of the authentic Lukaku experience yeah, well, slight mistake from Sanchez was allowing Lukaku to turn. He had him there towards the halfway line. If he'd have got nice and tight to him, probably would have made him have to play backwards instead. He allowed him to turn. 1v1. Great battle, wasn't it? Lukaku looked to have the edge. And then Sanchez with a sliding challenge. And then Lukaku winning it back. Brilliant. Well, Chelsea have a free kick then. 34 minutes on the clock. Attacking the goal away to our left. The free kick to be taken six yards in from the right touch line the left footer Ziyech will take it and try and whip it in towards the goal he does that towards the penalty spot too close to it oh and it hits the back of the defender and goes in own goal Tanganga against Davis Davis somehow just couldn't get out of the way it hits the back of the defender and goes in and it's 2-0 to Chelsea it's a Davis own goal oh it's smelling it's a horrible horrible own goal when you head this away, Tanganga, you, even though there's no pressure on you, you've got to think about where you're heading it. It's got to be up and out, not just anywhere. And he just wants to get the power on the header. He heads it straight into the back of Davis, who unfortunately then bounced into the goal. Lloris, absolutely no chance. I'm afraid, Tanganga, that's purely your fault. Well, Ziyech, brilliant delivery, really, but maybe a little bit too deep. And Tanganga dropped towards the edge of his own six-yard box, tried to head it clear. The only player anywhere near him was Davis. It came off the back of Davis' head. He wasn't really aware of the situation, just bobbled straight into the net. I mean, it was calamitous. Absolutely calamitous. It, it, it's Tanganga's fault and nobody else's, whether Davis is close to him or not. The rule always has to be heading it out and away, out wide and away, high and away. He did none of them. Well, Jaffet Tanganga, who played in an unfamiliar position against Palace the other week on the left side of a back three, back in a more natural position on the right side of a back three tonight for Antonio Conte, has contributed to Chelsea doubling their lead before half-time. I don't think we can argue about the fact that Chelsea's superiority merits a two-goal lead. No, they've been fantastic. Tempo, the way they've won the ball back when they've given it away. The, uh, the quality in possession as well, the positions that the likes of Mount and Ziyech and Havertz have picked up, so difficult to defend against. It would be nice though if Tottenham were to contribute to this game in some form whatsoever. It is a semi-final after all. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, remember, made seven changes for this encounter. They've had 72% possession, 280 passes to Tottenham's 110. Chelsea have had eight shots on goal. They've scored twice, and one of those wasn't even from one of their shots. And Tottenham have had none, not one, in the match. Havertz down the left, trying to take on De Vincent Sanchez. Moves towards the corner flag, and then a little back heel through the legs of De Vincent Sanchez. But Emerson Royale tidies up, gets it to Lucas Moura, and Tottenham try to play their way out of a very tight spot up to Kane. And then immediately he's harassed by Jorginho and Chelsea. I think maybe have given away a free kick here just short of the halfway line. And Rudiger taking his time giving it back. We've got eight minutes before half time. I'll tell you what, Antonio Conte cannot wait for the half time break to get this lot in and rev them up a little bit. I can't imagine he'll be quite passive. When you read through the acrimony of some of the relationship fallouts that he had at Stamford Bridge, you know that he's not a guy, and he's quite clear about it. I'm not a diplomat, he says. He's not going to change his ways. He'll be in that dressing room at half-time and he'll be ripping into one or two. He will, and he needs to, because like I said, they've been five yards off even when Chelsea have got into their half. They've still stood off them, which is simply not good enough. I'm sure that's not something they would have been told. But also, tactically, he needs to sort something out in the middle of the pitch because Chelsea are just outnumbering Tottenham with the way that Ziyech and Mount are coming in and outnumbering them. Well, they're unbeaten domestically under Antonio Conte before today, but they're 2-0 down at Stamford Bridge, and Chelsea's supporters are enjoying themselves. So are the players. The ball is on the halfway line. Hoybier just travelling a little bit too far with the ball, and 
running down a cul-de-sac wins the free kick and Tottenham have it back again it's now with Ben Davis whose unfortunate own goal has doubled Chelsea's lead 2-0 the score here at Stamford Bridge on this Wednesday night up to Lucas Moura back out wide it's collected now by Emerson Royale and then reversed by Harry Kane blocked by the mountainous figure of Antonio Rudiger and that hasn't stopped in terms of singing and cheering and goading since the first whistle went in but before that since the lights went out and the PA announcer tried to whip out the crowd he didn't have to try very hard on this occasion Chelsea lead 2-0 here's Lucas Moura just short of the halfway line tries to play it diagonally infield hits Jorginho comes back to Tanganga his ball forward bobbles over the head of Kane and Chelsea win it back through Saar plays it square to the left Alonso looks up he has just made a diagonal run from right to left it's headed away by Davis Lukaku not sharp enough to pick it up De Vincent Sanchez skates away with the ball but Lukaku's coming back at him to put him under pressure and then Son turns away from Jorginho and runs into the Chelsea half he skips away from Saar and plays it out towards the right here's Emerson Royale taking on Alonso gets the ball and produced a decent cross he's a bit behind Doherty who flicks his head of goal was it's dropped by Arida Balaga and uh, Lucas Moura is being told that the ball was already in the arms of Arida Balaga who himself looked a little uncertain there well Doherty just went in too early he made that dart from the at the back post just a fraction too early he needed to make sure he stayed out waited to see the flight of the cross and he would have been free for a header instead he then tried to guide the header back and Lucas Moura to be fair has got one of the best leaps I think I've ever seen which is why it caused Ariza Balaga an issue it would have been a foul I think he could have put it in the net yeah well he's had his problems isn't he and he's had his problems in this competition remember it was the final of the Carabao Cup in which he after feigning injuries try and waste time at the end of the game <laughs> then refused to come off evoking a strop of all strops from Maurizio <laughs> Sarri who was the then manager <laughs> yeah. Chelsea have been through one or two managers in the last few years that wasn't actually that long ago uh, here is uh, uh, Emerson Royale's pass is poor and Rudiger has picked it off he's then lost out to Lucas Moura and it's collected by Son who's scrapped to win the ball back uh, it's forward by uh, Tanganga and he's lost the ball once again Emerson Royale's then lost it out towards his near side it's collected by Havertz who clips the ball over towards the far side and Ziyech is lurking in a bit of space he's taken it down Doherty's got out to him but still Ziyech has the ball across into the area looking for Lukaku with the header narrowly wide of the goal that was the moment for Lukaku his only real chance in the first 40 minutes of the game across from Ziyech from the right hand side was perfect he just didn't get enough power and direction on the head of Lukaku to make it 3-0 to Chelsea when he reviews it he'll think he should have done no he should absolutely he should have scored Lukaku it's a fantastic floated delivery from Ziyech just into an area that says oh. go and attack it Romelu and he he reads the flight a lot quicker than Sanchez just takes a step to his right he's up nice and high just nod that into one of the corners and he glances the header too much of a glance probably a couple of inches past the post it's a wonderful chance for Lukaku so Anthony Barrett's just having a word with uh, Mason Mount one of the assistant coaches down on the touchline there's a bit of an issue here for uh Kai Havertz, who, who again still isn't 100% recovered. Greg Borson's just gone and had a word with him and asked him to go off the field of play because he's received some medical attention. As a result of that, he has to go off and then come back on again. But uh, Tottenham are going to get the ball back through an uncontested drop ball away to our left-hand side. And we've got just over three minutes to play at the end of the first half. And there'll be a bit of an inquest in that Tottenham dressing room. Thomas Tuchel will know that things will change in the second half and he'll be trying to think one or two steps ahead about how he will himself alter proceedings. We've just had seen a replay of that Romelu Lukaku header. He got up brilliantly to head it goalwards. And it was, what, two inches wide of the left-hand upright? Just trying to be a fraction too cute with the... Oh, Mount, very cute, tries to do a little Cruyff turn through the legs of Oliver Skip, who's having none of it, and drags him back to the floor, gives away a free kick, and Chelsea have possession on this near side to left. Well, yellow, yellow card? No, no, it's just a great bit of skill from Mason Mount. That was all, a little bit of movement, though, on Chelsea's bench. I wonder whether Havertz can't continue or not. 
Well, they will want to get this victory over the line. They've drawn six of their last eight home games. The only defeat they've suffered this season at this place was against Manchester City. They certainly don't want to lose to Tottenham. Uh, but a two-goal lead gives them a little bit more security than the 1-0 advantage that they had here against Brighton last midweek when they weren't very good at all. Here on the right-hand side, the ball is with Chelsea and Afpilicueta. On to Ziyech. Ziyech now with his back to goal. Sends it centrally and it's collected by Saul Neguez. Who finds Molongsar on the edge of the centre circle. It's forward to Alonso. A poke out wide into Mount. First time into Lukaku. Holds it up well. Alonso. Mount, Lukaku again, Lukaku's out wide producing a cross into the box, needed Lukaku in the centre to convert it, no one was in there, so Holes won it back, put it in the edge of the box, Apilicueta with the shot, cannons off the defender and it's stopped by Lloris from going behind and away for a corner kick, it was excellent reaction from Chelsea and Saul Neguez, brilliant on the edge of the Tottenham penalty area, winning the ball back high up again Oh brilliant, yeah, fantastic last ditch challenge against Son who may have been away on the counter attack and then Apilicueta Shots blocked, but Chelsea got it back again. Mount Ziesch, Mount Ziesch, Mount again, right side <laughs> this time. Onto Ziesch, left footed into the box, looking for Havertz and Lukaku, who just couldn't quite get away from their markers to get a run on the ball, and neither one of them in the end challenged for it, and it flies behind and away for a goal kick away to our left hand side we're in the last minute of the first 45 you're listening to talk sport remember fa cup action this weekend is live on talk sport friday night swindon against manchester city we've got nine games right the way through the weekend all the way to monday night uh, when adrian and i will be back up at uh, old trafford for live and exclusive national radio commentary you won't be able to hear that game anywhere else manchester united against aston villa as stevie g takes his team uh, to manchester united in the fa cup third round and all those games now one-off matches so they have to come to a conclusion on the day which makes it even more super exciting <laughs> we love the FA Cup absolutely here's Mount on the halfway line chipping the ball forward it's over hit for Lukaku and uh, that will just drift away towards the corner flag over on the far side just a one minute of added time at the end of a rather satisfactory first half if you're a Chelsea supporter not so much if you're of a Tottenham persuasion they'll be incredibly disappointed with the way that their team have approached this semi-final bearing in mind the paucity of trophies since well since forever really I mean as Adrian was pointing out they have won just one since 1991's FA Cup final which was the 2008 trophy that they won under one day Ramos against Chelsea the Worthington was it the Worthington Cup at the time I think it probably was uh, anyway the League Cup they won it in 2008 and won nothing since they've been to the final and they've lost the final they've lost semi-finals too and they're losing this semi-final by two goals to nil ball sent forward over the halfway line for Lucas Moura to chase Alonso tries to get there can't Lucas Moura returns towards the edge of the penalty area takes on Alonso once again now he's got Saar to deal with who does brilliantly well Mount snaps into a tackle that's the end of the first half and uh, Tottenham Hotspur find themselves two goals down well Chelsea were certainly bruised and wounded over the weekend but they are determined not to suffer any more blows and appear back in the best possible way they lead Tottenham Hotspur in the League Cup semi-final at the break thanks to goals from Kai Havertz and a calamitous comedy own goal involving Tanganga and ultimately Ben Davies at the break it is Chelsea 2 Tottenham Hotspur 0 Matt Doherty has been replaced by Tangi in Dombele and they've gone to a back four Tottenham in this second half I'll go through the 11 for you in just a moment Chelsea have also made a change we did think that Kai Havertz was struggling a little bit he's been replaced by Timo Werner his compatriot I think they'll stay the same in terms of shape Chelsea in the second 45 Chelsea shooting from left to right in blue shirts and blue shorts white socks Tottenham in white t-shirts navy shorts and socks attacking their supporters away to our left hand side so the Chelsea team is Aretha Balaga in goal with Pelicueta, Saar and Rudiger and then Ziyech playing a sort of almost like a half position as a, a wing back at times and then as a more forward player when Chelsea have the ball Alonso is the left wing back Jorginho and Saul 
in the centre of the park with Mount and Werner behind Lukaku in attack. Uh, Tottenham have the ball on the right side. This is Emerson Royale who moves up towards the edge of the penalty area onto Lucas Moore who takes over now. Tries to get the cross in towards Son who dives in with a header. Aspilicueta gets there first, comes back in via Emerson Royale before Chelsea smuggle it away. Only as far as Skip who gets it back into the box. It's away by Saul Neguez and now Chelsea look to bring it clear. It takes a little bump on the far side. Werner tries to engage with Hoybier. He pushes the ball forward. It's cut out by Arida Belaga. Loris is the Tottenham goalkeeper. Emerson, Tanganga, Sanchez and Davis the back four. Hoybier, Skippen and Dombele in midfield with Lucas Moura and Son supporting Kane in attack as the Tottenham Hotspur team. Now Dean Ashton is alongside me. Chelsea have drawn far too many games at home in the recent past. They're just going to make sure that they don't let this lead slip now. Exactly, it's just whether that tactical change of Antonio Conte is going to make a difference now with instead of back four and Ndombele getting an extra body in midfield for, for Tottenham and they've started bright in this second half and that's what top managers do they don't allow a situation to continue well, it was never going to be as bad as it was in the first half for Tottenham when they were dreadful uh, ball sent into the middle uh, looking for uh, the run of Kane headed away by Apilicueta there's enough room for him to run out and chase the ball and get it clear upfield not a great precision pass forward that's so imprecise that it's picked off by Skip who has it in midfield plays it to the left and now Son the South Korean trying to take on uh, Seoul comes back out to the left where it's collected by Ndombele the second half substitute remember Spurs have scored in 10 of the 11 games under Antonio Conte before tonight and they will expect to try and do so again and a goal at any stage in the first 15-20 minutes of this second half really will change the feeling around this match because in the first 45 minutes Chelsea should have been over the hill and far far away they should with Lukaku's opportunities and it's just allowed with that change of system it's just allowed Tottenham to squeeze a little higher maybe take more of a risk in terms of you know the spacing behind for Werner and Lukaku but something had to change and so far it's definitely made a difference Yep, they've had the ball inside the Chelsea half probably more in the opening two minutes and 54 seconds of the second half than they did the entirety of the first half. As uh, Lallon Saar nabs the ball on the edge of the D from Ndombele, claims that he did so legally, but Craig Paulson said no, and the free kick has been given in a really dangerous position, just a step back from the edge of the D for Tottenham in the dead centre of the goal away to our left-hand side in a perfect position in shooting range for Harry Kane. Yeah, it's a tasty position. It can be either a right or left-footed player from the, the centre of the pitch. You've got to be absolutely sure when you're up against Ndombele that you can get the ball because he's one of those players that looks as if he's lost the ball but that low centre of gravity and almost like he's got Velcro on his boot just to be able to keep hold of the ball just meant that Saar clattered through the back of him. Well, Arita Balaga being tested for the first time quite lightly here didn't really have anything to do in that first 45 minutes but Tottenham have come out with a little bit more energy at the start of the second half Chelsea lead by two to nothing the ball is just back from the edge of the D Jorginho organizing the wall and the goalkeeper to make sure that Chelsea is set up to defend this free kick there is a five-man Chelsea wall and two just stuck on the end of that it's going to be Kane who steps up right foot it drives it low good push away by Arida Malaga who dives to his right and pummels the ball out for a throw-in on this near side it was a really good save by the goalkeeper who made sure that it was pushed away from harm's way I can't really remember the last time Harry Kane scored a free kick he just take every single free kick and I think well Son takes all the set plays I mean I, I would do the same if I was him I'd want every single opportunity that comes around and he probably looks good in training but in terms of actually looking like he's going to score from free kicks if you look at someone like Ward Prowse there's no real comparison. Good throw by Apelica away to send Chelsea on their way. Lukaku trying to run at the Vincent Sanchez down the right side of the Tottenham penalty area. Sanchez, the Colombian, just nudges the ball out of play on this near side. He scored a crucial goal at the weekend to Vincent Sanchez. A last-minute goal, a 95th-minute header, which gave Tottenham all three points. They could do with a bit of intervention here as Kane comes forward. Son makes a break down the left-hand side. He's fed by Kane. Gets to the edge of the area. Brilliantly timed slide tackle 
up from Saul, who wins the ball back for Chelsea deep inside their own half. And Chelsea, who have got a bit of a midfield problem whenever Conte is not in the team, will be delighted to see him flourish tonight, and he has done so far. Werner charging down the Chelsea right, draws Sanchez out from the middle. He slides and puts the ball out of play, and Timo Werner gets it back again from Ziyech. Lukaku's on the move. The ball from... Uh, Ziyech wasn't particularly accurate, goes out to the far side instead and it's collected by Alonso. Now Mount has it and Chelsea have Jorginho in possession just left of the centre circle. Far side the Chelsea left, Alonso in towards Lukaku, tries to wrap his foot round the ball and nudge it forward but doesn't get any power behind it and it goes straight into the arms of Hugo Lloris away to our right. We've played just over six minutes at the start of the second half. It's Chelsea 2, Tottenham Hotspur nil on Talk Sport and here's Dean Ashton. Well again, Saul, it was with a with a magnificent challenge. Oh, Paul by Skip, forward by Ziyech, doesn't connect with Werner and the ball goes all the way back to Lloris. But Tottenham have been a lot better. A lot more urgency. They've absolutely had a rocket at half time, there's no doubt about that. And just that change of, of system as well has allowed them to get a little bit of a foothold in midfield and just stop that ball going in towards Mount and Ziyech because Skip and Kuiberg have been able just to split a little bit wider. Saar, poor ball, Son receives it for Tottenham in the centre circle skip now onto Hoybier who takes it over the halfway line goes back to Tanganga Tanganga pumps it forward into the feet of the Brazilian Lucas Moura and then skip tries to nudge it through to Tungi on Dombele who feels he was bullied by Rudiger and it goes all the way back to Arida Balaga with no fanfare and Chelsea have possession once again. Chelsea have only lost once in their last 35 meetings here at Stamford Bridge with Spurs. It's been a running joke in these parts for many a year. And penalty shootouts aside, Chelsea are unbeaten in the last eight meetings. And Antonio Conte knows all about that because he once beat Tottenham in a semi-final with Chelsea. Semi-final of the FA Cup how he would love to be able to take Spurs to Wembley but in order to do that he's got to construct a comeback from 2-0 down and we've only played a quarter of this tie here is Werner looking for Lukaku he's got space for Ziyech round the back Ziyech with a shot straight down the throat of the keeper well he could have returned it to Lukaku he could have sent it either side of Lloris he did and he went straight down the middle after Werner then Lukaku, then Ziyech combined really well to open up that Tottenham back line. Well, because he was so desperate for it to be a left-footed strike coming in from that right-hand side that it kind of made it so obvious what he was trying to do as Tottenham break. And Dombele charging through the centre. He's got some space on the far side where now it's collected by Lucas Moura. Back to Ndombele, a chance to pull the trigger. He does and shoots over the top of the crossbar. Poor effort from Tongi in Dombele. His goals have been few and far between. He's only made 14 appearances this season. It was his birthday last week. And that was a bit of a gift on the edge of the penalty area. It was rolled back to him in a nice area. It was. It was just a, a poor execution of the strike. Just was off balance as he struck the ball. Hence why it didn't go where he wanted it to and up and over the bar. But they, they look more like the Tottenham we expect, especially on the counter-attack. One little thing I've noticed is Ariza Balaga is so far out of his goal whenever they win the ball back. I just wonder whether someone like Kane or Son can maybe spot that and have a, have a go. 55 minutes gone. It's Chelsea 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0. Tanganga wins the flick ahead of Lukaku, guides it back to De Vincent Sanchez. Um, we're in southwest London tonight at Stamford Bridge, live on Talk Sport. Chelsea leading by two goals to nil in the Carabao Cup. First leg of the semi final. Games played home and away to decide who gets to the final of the competition at Wembley. The Liverpool Arsenal semi final is still going to be over two legs, although they're going to be reversed now with the first leg at Anfield next Thursday night, live on Talk Sport. Here is Davis on the halfway line. Kane sandwiched between two Chelsea jerseys. Saul comes away with the ball, plays it intelligently to Jorginho. That might have been a foul by Hoybier. The referee is allowed play on. Chelsea have got the ball with Rudiger and they look to construct from the back. 
And wherever you're listening to us tonight, thank you very much for choosing Talk Sport. Especially a big hello to our friends across the pond of the USA who are listening on Sirius XMFC tonight. Thank you very much for lending us your ears. Another crunching tackle goes in on Ziesch on the near side. Craig Paulson calls a halt to proceedings. By the way, you asked the question, Harry Kane, when was the last time that he scored a free kick, a direct free kick? Well, I'll tell you, his only goal direct from the free kick came all the way back in 2014-15 as the offside flag goes up against Werner. A 90th minute winner against Aston Villa, according to our researcher and ace producer, Declan McCarthy. He's only scored one. He's never scored one, apparently. Apparently so. He needs to come off him then. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a great track record, is it? If that is indeed. I mean, we've got no reason to disbelieve him. That seems to be the case. Chelsea went on the attack, but uh, Werner was flagged offside. That's not something that uh, is unusual in these parts. Very much known for his uh, playing right on the very edge. Let's just say it like that, Timo Werner. And Dombele trying to get to the halfway line. Tuchel not happy, screaming, shouting at his players. Desperate to get things moving once again. He wants to make sure that Chelsea, who had their foot on the throat of the Tottenham team at half-time, continue to push down on it. Here is Molong Sar. Asked a bit of uh, Alonso, but found him eventually. It's taken out towards the far touchline and Werner, who scoops it back into a central position. Oh, great ball to Rudiger, who deals with it, sends it wide. Now Athpilicueta on to Ziyech, who tries to cut in past Ben Davis. Finds Saul, tries to calm proceedings down. He's engaged by Ndombele, then goes to ground, loses it to Son, and looks for a foul, doesn't get one. Lucas Moura comes away. Saar gets in front of Kane, stops it from going anywhere and tidies up for Chelsea at the back and they have possession once again, lead 2-0. Well, there's opportunities there for Tottenham when they win the ball back. That's a couple of opportunities now and it's just been a lack of quality. It was a poor decision and pass from Lucas Moura into Kane but it's much more of a contest the second half than there was in the first. Well, it had to be, didn't it? I mean, it was so one-sided in the first half, it was frightening, really. Here is Saul Neguez. He'll be delighted to be able to get into the team today. And this is a trophy that gets denigrated, Dean, probably too easily. Competition probably has to lose the idea of the two-legged semi-finals in the future. But it is certainly a competition that has its place, Ralph Rangnick. And it's been enhanced by its straight-to-penalty format change, I think, over the course of the last couple of years. Chelsea win the ball back, high inside opposition territory. It's picked up on the left by Mount into Werner, inside the area, tries to get a shot away. Silly, really, because he had Saul free in space, just to his right, didn't use him. Saul has won the ball back, though, from Poibios. He threatened to escape, and Saul was fed Ziyech, right-hand side. Chance to cross now for Ziyech, who gets to the corner flag, and then left-footed, drives it into the near post, and then a little flick from uh, Saul Neguez trying to play it between his own legs ends up making a mess of it really and it goes behind and away for a goal kick away to our right hand side it's Chelsea 2, Tottenham Hotspur 0 well I'm not sure if Saul Neguez has been on the Ashton Christmas diet but he looks so much stronger honestly he doesn't look, he doesn't look like he's bulked up as the, much the as Ash- I do the Ashton Christmas diet what, what did that consist of? that, that consists of bulking that's for sure but he's honestly he's looked more combative in this game he hasn't lost out in them 50-50s he's up to the speed of the game which can't be said of other appearances I've been I've been impressed with him yeah he did try to do the the Zola flick against Norwich didn't quite come off uh, but uh, that was a good attempt Chelsea lead 2-0 you uh, you talk about Christmas diets I have to tell you what I had a terrible Christmas diet yeah, you were, that's because you were running every day. Oh, yeah, but then once I stopped running because I couldn't go out anymore because I had COVID, I just, just went straight into the quality streets and the roses, everything. Oh, so much chocolate is unreal. I think I ate Cadbury's, finished them off, went for Nestle, <laughs> and then started on Terry's. <laughs> Up to halfway, Tottenham have the ball deep inside their own half. I do love a Terry's chocolate orange, though. Oh, absolutely. 
Hoybier. Has to be the actual round orange like though. Switched by Lucas Moura out towards the left hand side. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, and Dombele takes it forward. It's blocked by Sol Naguez. Oh, and Ziyech was charged away by uh, Davis illegally. He tugged him back and stopped him from escaping. So they have a free kick, Chelsea, in the right full back position. Ziyech. But that, that's what you want to see though. When that ball does get played into Ziyech, you want Davis right on top of him. Okay, he gave away a foul with a, a handball, but that's what you want. Right up the backsides of the Chelsea players, making sure that they haven't got an easy turn. Lukaku chasing a long ball forward, played by, forward by uh, Saar, it's cut out by Tottenham Hotspur and helped down the right. Now it's picked up by Emerson Royale, who plays it into Kane, who's had a few more touches of the ball in the second half, but not that many. Uh, collected on by uh, Mount, who's just short of the centre circle, energising the Chelsea performance again. Plays it out to the left, and Alonso now sends Werner away. Ziyech in the attack, so is Lukaku. Werner still got the ball, moves into the box, gets onto his right foot, shoots towards the far corner. Wasn't far away from Timo Werner. Really wasn't too far away at all from Timo Werner, who does have three goals in his last four games and was mighty close to getting another there. Well, they just backed off and backed off. Lovely bit of movement as well from the other Chelsea attackers just to take away the Tottenham defenders just inside the 18-yard box, just looking to bend it into that far corner. Just a fraction wide from Werner. Kane has been engaged here by Molong Saar and a yellow card is coming out as a result of that. Kane's gone down to the ground. Afpilicueta is seeking explanation from Craig Pawson, but a yellow card is the order of the day. Yeah, you tend to get a card nowadays if as the striker turns or the attacker turns and looks like he's getting away if an elbow strikes the face you tend to get a yellow card and Kane remains on the floor be a sore one well, there's going to be a sore one he's getting treatment as a result of that let me tell you about uh, our TalkSport daily podcast which is available for you from 4am every weekday morning you can download it it includes some of the best bits from TalkSport and TalkSport 2 over the last 24 hours the official TalkSport daily is available via Apple Podcasts Spotify or Acast and if you want your fully fledged Premier League fix you can look no further than another one of our podcasts the TalkSport game day podcast I'll be recording that tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock as we look ahead to the FA Cup third round. We've got a special FA Cup geek coming on tomorrow. You won't mind me referring to him as that. Special guest tomorrow on the podcast, which will be out around about sort of tea time tomorrow for you. Alex Crook will be with me. Darren Lewis from The Mirror is always on it on a Thursday as well. Dean pops up every now and again, don't you? I do now and again, yeah. I'd yeah. Yeah. love to have you on there. That's on the TalkSport app and uh, wherever you get your podcast. Chelsea 2, Tottenham Hotspur nil. Kane still getting treatment over on the far side. We've got... Uh, all the fallout to this game, dissected and diced up with Jamie O'Hara and Dean Saunders from 10 o'clock tonight on the sports bar. And then Jim and Simon will be back tomorrow morning. Interesting, I say interesting, an absolute scrap went on this morning about Kieran Trippier and his motivation I, I heard it. for I heard uh, it. <laughs> going to Newcastle United. I don't know if you heard it, uh, but um, if you didn't, it's well worth a listen on our app, going back and having a good flick through on the TalkSport app to the highlights of that show in particular because Simon and Trevor when they get going I mean, they actually get on quite well I think Simon and Trevor you know despite the fact that it doesn't sound like that I was going to say you could have <laughs> called me <laughs> got to say I was team Trevor on that point <laughs> so you think he's not just gone for the money but for a bit of glory as well he's a multi-millionaire already Ball is out of play now on the right-hand side and we're back underway once again with Chelsea leading Tottenham by two goals to nil in the Carabao Cup semi-final. Breakfast show tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock. Usual suspects, Alan Brazil, Alan McCoy, Scabby at Bon Lahore. Steve Harmison's on the show tomorrow looking back at the Ashes and Andy Townsend is there as well. Here is uh, Kane on the halfway line, being held up this time by Saul. Free kick given, CH won't let him take it quickly. He wants to fire it down the right, it's a poor delivery, but Marcus Alonso has handed it back to Lucas Moura. Edge of the area, on the right-hand side, Royale is joining the attack. A low cross into the box, which is blocked by Alonso, and steered away to the far side. That was dreadful from Alonso, who switched off as that ball came in from Kane, because his initial delivery was pretty poor. It was. Alonso just couldn't sort his feet out, and it just ricocheted off his shins into Moura's path. 
Emerson Royale. He had plenty of opportunities against Watford at the weekend to deliver quality. And again, it's been poor. Yeah, it's Ben Davis down the left-hand side. His ball into the box is not very good either. And it's blocked by a Philip Gawaita, not once but twice. And Ben Davis now looking for a third chance to get the ball in, in centrally. Comes back and instead hands it off to Hoybier. Ziyech being encouraged by his manager, Thomas Tuchel, to come out and engage on this near side. And Chelsea now looking themselves as if at times they're in a back four regresses Lucas Moura comes forward exchanges passes and before he can get to the edge of the box after receiving one off Son it's cleared away by Ziyech who's done very well uh, Lukaku has just absolutely bullied De Vincent Sanchez and it's a lovely ball up to Werner edge of the area tries to chip the goalkeeper stopped by Lloris who lifted his arms up and stopped him scoops, scooping over his head and into an empty net well Ziyech with a brilliant delivery into Werner who may have just been on the edge of being onside and offside but the referee and the linesman said play on, conspired to keep the flag down and Werner will be disappointed he didn't put the ball in the net. I thought he was offside if I'm honest, but it was a great ball, you're right. Lukaku doing the, the hard work early on, just ragdolling Davinson Sanchez. But I just think time and time again, Werner, he just makes the wrong, he picks the wrong type of finish. I think there, Lloris is so far out of his goal, but really close to him. You've just got to put it either side of him, nice and low. Trying to chip Lloris from when the goalkeeper's so close to you. I just think he just picks the wrong type of finish too often, Werner. And at his age, is he coachable? Of course. To change that? Of course. To change that decision-making process? Of course. Lukaku getting back to try and put pressure on Skip, does that, then comes away with the ball at the second occasion, and Kane goes in on Lukaku and wins it back. It's a bit of a slugfest now as Kane fires it forward, stopped by Rudiger. Chelsea got it back again on halfway, leading by two goals to nil. It's a real scrap in this second half, and certainly Chelsea, who had it all their own way in the first 45 minutes, haven't had as much joy in the second half, but... They've no need to force the issue. They have their two goals already on the scoreboard. Tottenham have got to find a way back into the game. Ideally, you know, if they can contain this at 2-0, I think Antonio Conte will be much happier going back at the end of the game than he was at half-time. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't get any worse, that's for sure. You, you know, the scoreline, I mean, in terms of looking at the second leg, to keep it as it is or to, to get one back, I think, is vital for, for Tottenham. But Chelsea still carrying a threat. With Lukaku and Werner well, Lukaku on the top end of the pitch. Being nudged onto the floor by Sanchez. He thought he was going to get a foul there. He didn't. And now Tottenham come away with it down the right-hand side. And Kane has linked the ball forward into the path of uh, Sangi and Dombele. It goes back to the right. And it's coll collected by Royale via Hoybier. Hoybier, the Dane, plays it centrally into De Vincent Sanchez. And now it's on to Davis. Down the left into Son. Son round the corner onto Kane. Kane back to Skipper and then infield to Hoybier once again. Now it's on to Tanganga, whose error for the second goal will be played over and over again, I think. Here is Hoybier, out wide, and Dombele, chance to cross. It's aimed towards Lucas Moura with an acrobatic effort, which was improvised and wasn't too far away from reaching the top corner. Arida Balaga certainly didn't look too ruffled away to our left-hand side. There was a good cross from the right from Tanganga and Dombele. It was. It's a difficult skill, that, though, when it's high up, around shoulder height, looking to volley it for Lucas Moura. He did his best, couldn't quite keep it down, but they're only half chances, aren't they, for, for Tottenham. We're, we're yet to see a real clean-cut opportunity for any player in a white shirt. Yeah, I was just looking down at my piece of paper and just saying, how many chances have they really had in the game? And the answer is none, really, are not, they? No, no clear-cut chances in the match I mean they probably registered a shot on target just the one so far but only two shots on goal in the entire match to Chelsea's 16 tells its own story it does it surprised me that Reguilon hasn't come on yet Ben Davis is I think he's a bit of an enigma he's such a good defensive left back but nowadays when you look for your fullbacks to be so dynamic and, and, and useful in attacking areas he's very much not that well, it looks like Chelsea are going to make a change in the uh, immediate future. And uh, I think it's Ruben Loftus-Cheek I saw go down 
to get uh, changed in front of the dugouts which are right below us here in the east stand we're at the back of this huge huge stand with its magnificent canopy which hangs over the top of uh, every seat oh, Kovacic is there as well it looks like he might come onto the field of play and it's a brilliant view from up here of what is uh, usually a very good playing surface although I've just noticed actually there's a few sort of little patches here and there on that Chelsea playing surface that uh, might need a bit of attention after this game it's been pretty chilly in London and we do expect a big freeze over the next couple of days don't we 20 minutes to go in the first leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final you're listening to Talk Sport live at Stamford Bridge and it's Sam Matterface and Dean Ashton in the East Stand watching as Tottenham try to construct an attack and there haven't been enough of those today for Antonio Conte's liking Kane wide on the left wing sends it wide towards the right hand side high into the air it drops for Emerson Royale then into Lucas Moura who guides it back to skip and then it's feathered forward by uh, Tanganga but Hoybier hesitated and that allowed Mount to come and nab it and send Saul forward and he's charging into open grass he's running forward still being pursued now by Kane plays it wide for Lukaku Lukaku fancies his chances plays it against Davis goes out for a corner yeah he's so dangerous 1v1 Lukaku he's so direct in the way that he attacks defenders just looking to jink past Davis who did well just to get a good body shape defensively out for a, a corner but difficult for Tottenham to know whether to really gamble and maybe lose a third goal or to keep it as it is keep it nice and tight only at two a lot of cheek about to come on for Chelsea and Kovacic too so a change in midfield for the home team who lead by two goals to nil Mason Mount raises his left arm takes the corner in towards the near post it's flicked away uh, Ziyech tries to keep it alive doesn't get enough on the ball but Chelsea have possession back with Saar who's going to decide to go back to his goalkeeper here does all the way to Kepa Arida Balaga away to our left hand side and uh, Rida Balaga just waiting for Tottenham to apply some sort of press so that he can try and chip the ball over the top of it he lands it in towards uh, Lukaku but it was a really poor ball forward by Rida Balaga and telegraphed as well and Tottenham defender easily I'm not quite sure what he's thinking I think he's trying, just trying to feed it in towards Lukaku who's shouting something back at his goalkeeper as we, as we speak this is a couple of changes for, for Chelsea and Mason Mount gets a standing ovation as he's replaced by Matteo Kovacic. And the other change, I think it's going to be Saul. For Ruben Loftus cheek. And Kovacic, who played really well in the game on uh, Sunday, will take up a position alongside Jorginho. And Loftus cheek will be given a little bit more license to get forward, I think. We haven't really got monitors up here in the uh, gantry, but we have had the opportunity just to have a quick look at the second, a second look of that Molong Sar incident where he got a yellow card for engaging with Harry Kane. His left elbow comes across and goes into the cheek of Harry Kane. Kane had extensive treatment. And I know that Thomas Tuchel felt on Sunday as if Mane could have been sent off in the first six seconds of the game for an elbow on Afpilicueta and Afpilicueta reiterated that after the game could that have been a red card? Absolutely it could have especially if you think I mean, we were talking about the incident of the weekend with it being a, a forearm that was definitely a, you know, the point of the elbow really into Kane's chin I think again there's no malice I think he's trying to get his, his body across but it certainly endangers Kane Loftus Cheek comes forward with the ball for Chelsea, the substitute, plays it down the right, gets it back again, gets to the byline, tries to send it through the centre, not precise enough with his pass towards Lukaku, and it's cut out by the Tottenham defence, well won by Rudiger, and now Ziyech on the edge of the area, trying to twist his way to the edge of the box, now surely he was fouled there, the referee says no play on, and Tottenham bring it clear, then goes out of play on this near side, it's away for a Chelsea throw, Ziyech certainly felt he was fouled, and so did Thomas Tuchel, but Loftus Cheek making an immediate impact, loves carrying the ball forward, does he? when he's at his very best he looks so graceful and in command of the game drags Chelsea up the pitch and creates a chance he gives them something different in that midfield area obviously the physicality but the running off the off the forwards I think that's so important and gets neglected time and time again from certain midfield players 
you've got to make them runs in behind sometimes you won't get it he got it in that turn and it was a poor cross but sometimes you've got to make that run to open up space for others and it's another he's another one who benefited from the uh, league cup early in his career someone who played a, a lot of football in this competition and a lot of those chelsea players will certainly not need reminding about the fact that it has launched some talent in the past this competition another reason to be cherished and even most recently we've seen charlie patino explode onto the stage the arsenal teenager in this here competition the carabao cup which tonight has seen chelsea take a two goal lead early in the first half maintain that lead but not extend it in the second half they certainly had the much much the better of the first 45 minutes but in the second half Tottenham have just come into the game a little bit more with a tactical change they went to a back four at the break and as a result of that had an extra man in midfield and have wrestled a little bit more control of the game still Chelsea lead by two goals to nil though live on TalkSport and live across the United States on Sirius XMFC whenever you're listening tonight thank you very much for choosing us we appreciate it here's Rudiger on the edge of his own penalty area for Chelsea square to Molong Saar Chelsea themselves now gone to a back four with Rudiger and Saar as the central defenders Alonso and uh, Philip Gueta as the full backs Jorginho is the base midfield player Kovacic and uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek a little bit further on and then Werner and Ziyech flanking Lukaku in attack but ju just that change of formation for Tottenham it, it, the ball's into I mean Mount's gone off now but whether it be Kovacic now or Ziyech or Loftus-Cheek is just not as regular as it was in the first half great from Werner into Loftus-Cheek and back again Alonso's cross is deep Ziyech meets it on the volley over the top of the crossbar at the back edge of the six-yard box coming into a ball which was perfectly weighted for him by Alonso and Chelsea may well look back on chances for Lukaku and Ziyech and say Dean Ashton they should have had two more goals in this game at least well it's been a massive issue in this poor run especially at home turning victories into draws because of that lack of finishing that lack of ruthlessness and again that was evident there it's not a difficult skill it comes across he sees it all the way there's no pressure on your favoured foot as well just got to get over the top of it and he just snatched at it slightly all it was was a side foot volley if you asked him to do that in the warm-up he'd have done it easily under Look. pressure when you need to try and hit the back of the net didn't have the same composure Lukaku being wrestled by Davinson Sanchez Tottenham escape with the ball and move up the pitch at pace down the left hand side Tangier Gombele challenged by first I mean Rueda. how's that Alice, how, how that is a foul is beyond me well it looked like a foul didn't it first of all and then Rudiger kicked the ball at his head and it's gone behind and away for a uh, goal kick away to our left hand side I'm sure that Antonio Conte will be uh, asking questions about that issue with Molong Saar and Harry Kane he's just about to make a couple of changes himself with Giovanni Lo Celso and uh, Brian Hill coming on Chelsea might be making yet another change as well with Christian Pulisic getting stripped and ready for action and the Chelsea fans trying to lift the atmosphere inside Stamford Bridge once again they've got a very busy month and these two meet again in the Carabao Cup next week but also in the league in the not too distant future as well a significant fixture and Chelsea have got Manchester City in the immediate aftermath of the game against Tottenham Hotspur. Both those games are live on TalkSport. That Manchester City game is a game day game, 12.30 later in the month. And it's certainly to Chelsea's advantage. If they could go into next week's second leg with a three, four goal advantage, knowing that Manchester City are to come on the Saturday, then it makes things a lot easier and more palatable for them. It does. Even a 2-0 victory, I think, would be a strong position for Chelsea to be in, especially with having better form away from home. As Ziyech gets a standing ovation for his performance, I think he's been excellent, other than just a couple of moments where he needed to have hit the target. Christian Pulisic, it's on for him. It's a like-for-like -like change. Those two, both of them have been playing as forward players, all wing-backs, and... Uh, Pulisic has done that job and we've seen that recently I mean <laughs> Lo Celso has just come onto the pitch he's replaced Son I thought he was wearing tracksuit bottoms for a moment <laughs> he's got his socks pulled up so high and his shirt short so low and Hill is on for uh, Lucas Moura who's come off interesting changes it is when you think maybe you do want a goal and Son 
your most productive player this season has, has gone off. I mean, look, he's been non-existent, really. So an opportunity for Lo Celso and Hill. A ball out over on the far side, and Emerson Royale wants a free kick. He's going to get a free kick. Kovacic, uh, well, <coughs> thought initially, I think, that he was going to get penalised with a yellow card. That isn't the case. It's a free kick perpendicular to the edge of the penalty area over on the far side. So Hill and Lo Celso are on for Tottenham Hotspur. Neither of which really have made a huge impact this season so far. Free kick to be taken over on the far touchline by the tracksuit bottomed Lo Celso. It's very cold tonight, OK? Left-footed, in towards the near post. A flick on by Tanganga over the top of the crossbar. He had a great chance to make amends for what was a huge error in the first half. Very quickly did Ashton. That did look like it's the first time he's ever seen a football in an attacking sense. Honestly, the, the, the way he went at it, he attacked it as if he was defending it up and over the crossbar. That's just where you need a little bit of finesse. Tanganga, you got yourself in a great attacking position. Free header in the box, seven yards out. It just looked strange. Jaffet Tangangled. Nice. Let's, let's bring you some breaking news. Huge news from the world of tennis. Reports coming out of Australia this evening that Novak Djokovic's visa has been cancelled. He's been told to leave the country today. His lawyers are in the process of appealing. He's not demonstrated to border force sufficient evidence for his medical exemption from vaccination. Novak Djokovic will not participate in this year's Australian Open. That's the breaking news we're getting here on Talk Sport. Um, Prime Minister of Australia saying this morning, if he hasn't got the requisite papers, he will be on the next plane out of the country. That appears to have been the decision that has been made after his failure to produce the relevant evidence to the Border Force staff. As a result of that, his visa has been cancelled. More on that throughout the night here on Talk Sport. And we'll have the fallout to this game as well. 03717 It's the number to call if you want to have your say with Dean Saunders and Jamie O'Hara on the sports bar straight after we finish here. And we hope to bring you some live interviews as well from the touchline of Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte and find out what they were thinking during the course of this game. Still eight minutes to go, though, here at Stamford Bridge. And Tottenham have the ball. Harry Winks has come onto the field in the last couple of seconds as well as a substitute. And he has... Passed it back towards Tanganga. Infield to Los Celso. Out wide towards the right where it's collected now by Royale into Hoybier. Back to Kane. Kane on the edge of the area. Plays it wide. Round the corner for Ndombele. And Ndombele tries to feed the ball into the six-yard box. Can't do so. Takes a bobble. And Arriva balaga has got it in his arms again. They just haven't been able to finish off some of the moves, Tottenham. Every time it looks like they're in a good position... It's either a, a poor bit of quality or it's the wrong decision. But you just feel, Sam, isn't it? It's just, if there was to be another goal in this game, either way, I think it has huge ramifications as to who gets to the final. Well, if Chelsea were to score a third goal in the last few minutes here, then Tottenham would be so up against it, it's untrue, because they don't really score that many goals anyway. And scoring three at home against a Chelsea team with the you know the talent that they've got would be difficult but if Tottenham were to score in these last seven minutes really go for it and get a goal then it would change the complexion of that tie that second leg next Wednesday live on Talk Sport and what football we've got for you over the course of the next week we've got a football match for you every night from Friday Friday, Saturday, Sunday Monday, Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday next week all on Talk Sport Premier League FA Cup and Carabao Cup as well. Here is uh, Aspilicueta back into Rudiger, just right to the centre circle, clipping it out towards the far side. It's taken down by Alonso and then fed into the feet of Kovacic. Kovacic looks up, switches to play, out wide to the right, taken down by Pulisic. Pulisic cuts in, plays it onto Aspilicueta. Aspilicueta back to Pulisic once again, has to turn away from Brian Hill, whose brown hair is flapping in the in the wind here at Stamford Bridge. Goes back to Rudiger. Rudiger looks up. Lukaku is still operating as that central striker. He's, frus he's frustrated though, and I do feel for him. The way Chelsea do play and knock it about, there's not really that many players that get out their feet and look to play that early cross. 
and he's looked frustrated a few times because of that. And they've won it now, and Kovacic, looking for Lukaku, goes down the left-hand side, it's a bit behind him, so he has to turn under pressure from Emerson Royale. He turns it out to the left-hand side of Alonso, Alonso comes back into Kovacic. Kovacic now sliding it into a midfield position for... Loftus cheek, he goes back to Jorginho, Kovacic once again, looking to open up. He has scored a brilliant goal of the weekend, but he doesn't score too many, so the appeals for him to shoot a turn down is a foul about six yards back from the edge of the box by Ben Davis on Christian Pulisic, and Chelsea have a free kick from distance. And Alonso got a little bit of history, hasn't he? Free oh, kicks yes. against Tottenham, and this is just in the perfect position. He has six got or seven yards outside the box. He's a bit underrated in terms of free kicks. Yeah, I, I think. agree. I agree. Marcus Alonso. He's not he's spoken be, about. He's in, better in those than Kane. <laughs> well, he scored a lot in cup competition, but he, he has scored. He scored a key goal against Tottenham Hotspur in a free kick situation once before. He scored a lot of key goals against Tottenham Hotspur, including a last second winner at Wembley when Tottenham were playing their games there. And he scored four direct free kicks, I think, from uh, in the Premier League as well. So he's up there as far as players who have got the ability from this sort of range. And it is about, well, it is six yards from the edge of the penalty area. It's right of centre. It's perfect for the left footer. Hugo Lloris has lined up his five-man wall. It's Alonso, steps up towards the corner, hits Kane firmly in the face, and it's headed away by the England captain. Werner heads it down left side. Chelsea keep it alive with Kovacic. Good little play by him. Jorginho, Kovacic stretching, but keeping hold of possession. And then in the 86 minutes, played square to Rudiger. Out to the right, and that's put it away to Chelsea, keeping hold of the ball, and the Ole's have started amongst the crowd and they think that the uh, advantage is secured now and that Chelsea will go on and earn a place in the Wembley showpiece event but that still remains to be seen so does their opponents as well or whoever gets through to the final their opponents will be because Liverpool Arsenal's second leg has been delayed by a week here is Winks under pressure and it's clattered by Kovacic referee gives the free kick eventually against the Croatian midfielder and Winks places it down and takes it on and Chelsea about to go through a 12th home game unbeaten draws have been an issue but not tonight and exactly what they needed really maybe one ingredient missing from uh, the perfect night for Thomas Tuchel a Romelu Lukaku goal <laughs> yeah here is uh, Hoybier back to Winks. Winks, a bit of space, but nowhere really to go with it. Comes out towards the near side. And now it's with Brian Hill. Can he produce a cross? It's cleared away by Jorginho, shackling Kane. It's nudged on to the halfway line and Davis. And Tottenham encouraged to go forward. Chelsea not engaging. Afinikawaita went down momentarily away to our left-hand side, but he's back on his feet now, and Tottenham coming forward. Here is Brian Hill, running at Pulisic, inside, outside, outside again, gets beyond him, into the penalty area, pulls it back, decent shot by Lo Celso, brilliant save by Elia Malaga, and Dombele goes down, referee waves away the protest, and Chelsea managed to clear. What a brilliant save from Kepa Elia Malaga. Now Chelsea come on the counter-attack, and Loftus cheek charge forward, plays it out to the right, Lukaku bounds into the box now, gets onto his right foot, tries to come in on his left, it's blocked by Sanchez, it goes out for a corner. Brilliant defending brilliant defending from Sanchez but what an opportunity brilliant from Brian Hill on this left hand side, finally a Tottenham player looking to get past the Chelsea player lovely bit of skill to get past Pulisic picked out Tottenham attack, I'm not quite sure who it was in the melee but in Dombele, I think it was. Dombele, it was a great save from Ariza Balaga who's been had a quiet evening but was alert to the situation and then there was no way it was a penalty on the follow-up when Umdombele went flying young Harvey Vale is only 18 years of age he's about to become Chelsea's fifth substitute on the night he started the League Cup quarter-final against Brentford and he's going to replace Afbilica Waiter for the final few seconds of this game we have played 89 minutes of the encounter Chelsea have a corner away to our right-hand side Afbilica Waiter just having a word with Jorginho passing the captain's armband on and then shaking the referee's hand and then going around and shaking a few Tottenham players' hands as well just ink out a few seconds extra before coming off on this near side to be replaced by Harvey Vale again 
he is the 8 out of 10 man isn't he Aspilicueta honestly the consistency of his performances is unbelievable wearing number 68 <coughs> the second appearance of the season for Harvey Vale who trots up towards the edge of the D and awaits this corner kick Alonso delivers it right under Hugo Lloris and to Lloris easily thrusts his arms into the sky brings the ball down and dispatches upfield very quickly and a little nudge by Lo Celso on Jorginho results in a Chelsea free kick and we're into the final 30 seconds of the 90 here live on Talk Sport where it's Chelsea who lead by two goals to nil a dominant first half display and how much credit do you give Thomas Tuchel here for the way he set up his team tonight and, and you know the whole Lukaku situation around this could have been quite a tricky fixture tonight Dean it could but I think tactically he won the battle in that first half didn't he with the positions that Mount and Ziyech especially were picking up they dominated Tottenham they had no answer in that first half and that's where the damage was done and then they've just been pretty comfortable in this second half despite the change from Antonio Conte Rudiger tying himself in a bit of a knot towards the end of the game a poor pass to Pulisic and then getting in the Americans way ball cleared up towards the halfway line taken down by Jorginho and he finds Kovacic space out wide for Alonso to break now for Chelsea in injury time four minutes will be added at the end of the game we're into the first of those here's Timo Werner Ruben Loftus-Cheek back to Jorginho far side the left is Kovacic he's got support from Alonso dropping in towards him is Werner but he goes back to Kovacic instead and Chelsea contend to hold on to the ball Lukaku standing between Tanganga and to Vincent Sanchez hoping that something will fall his way before the night is out Saar over towards the left Alonso takes it on he's got Werner alongside him goes back into Kovacic Werner back to the halfway line Chelsea just keeping the ball ticking over and keeping Tottenham at arm's length which is what they've done pretty much for most of the game they're a bit further away than that in the first 45 minutes as Harvey Vale tries to turn it round the corner Pudisic is the one who's been asked to actually come and play as the right back is Vale came on to replace Apilicueta who was injured it's the first instalment of the semi-finals there's still a very long way to go in this competition nothing is decided yet but Chelsea will have the advantage going into the second leg and we've still got the two legs of the Liverpool Arsenal contest to come and one thing Chelsea will be buoyed about is the fact that it's now one defeat in 36 home games against Tottenham. Here's Kovacic, out to the right. Pulisic joining the attack now in the right wing position. He's got support from Loftus-Cheek. Infield it goes to Werner. Werner, centrally is Kovacic. Back to Loftus-Cheek again. Pulisic round the corner, bit of space to get the cross in. Lukaku wants it far post. The delivery is not at all precise. It's over the head of Lukaku. 10 15 yards away from where it needed to be really and it goes behind and out for a throw in over on the far side Jorginho brilliant engagement over on the far touch line and he snapped into a tackle in the middle of the park with Kane which is going to give a free kick away but he's been useful since uh, the very beginning of the match as well it's just been such an accomplished performance from Chelsea they are a top side under Thomas Tuchel of that there is no doubt and they've just been they've just been too good for Tottenham and when you think Tottenham would be going for a goal here in this first leg Chelsea have just slowed things down Kovacic, Jorginho especially brilliant game management well they've got 76 medals between them the Chelsea players to 36 on offer from their opponents they've got the experience and the nous as they come forward in the final few seconds here Pulisic, Kovacic wide right position needs support Harvey Vale back to Pulisic into Harvey Vale then on to Kovacic bit of space for him wants to go centre into Werner finds Werner slips it through to Lukaku left footed drives the ball straight at Hugo Lloris and there was the chance he's had one header and one effort from 10-15 yards which maybe he could have buried he hasn't but he certainly played his part tonight I know it's teed up for him wasn't it just to write that little headline rifle one into the top corner just hasn't been his night he's almost looked a little bit too desperate for that goal Romelu Lukaku snatched at a few chances well the Chelsea fans seem to have had a good night despite the fact that their 100 million pound signing hasn't delivered the goal that they need he has been part of a 
team that have delivered a very comprehensive victory over a Tottenham Hotspur side that have really struggled to test Arida Balaga. They've had just two shots on target in the entire game, only five all told to Chelsea's 18. Chelsea have dominated the ball 63 to 37. And that is the full-time whistle. Chelsea will take a lead to the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in a week's time as they put the drama and noise from offstage behind them and make a few headlines for their performance on it. Thomas Tuchel wanted a response from his team and from Romelu Lukaku to waft away the bad smell that lingered over the bridge. And whilst he didn't go into full older eater mode, he certainly helped Chelsea a little bit more fragrant. Tottenham have a lot of work to do to turn this around if they want to stay in the hunt for their first trophy in 14 years. Chelsea certainly the favourites after that 90 minutes. They've beaten Tottenham Hotspur courtesy of goals from Kai Havertz and an own goal from Ben Davis. Two goals to nil.